Okay, so I've got a brand new Retro Bat setup guide for you today. And this is, of course, for the 1985 Nintendo Entertainment System 8 bit console. So, in this setup guide today, I'm going to be showing you which file extensions you need to get your NES collection up and running, and also going through some of the best video settings, which is going to make your gameplay so much better. So, if you want a NES on Retro Bat and getting the best experience from it, check this video out. <laughs> Okay then, so first things first, if you like what you see today, hit notification, subscribe and like, it helps my channel out a great deal, plus it gets you up to date, retro bat and various other retro emulation setup guides that I cover almost every day on my channel. So we're looking at the awesome 8-bit Nintendo NES console released in 1985 and it pretty much revitalised the console era of the 80s after the crash happened. So anyways, that's a bit of history, so what we're going to do today is very simple we're looking at Nintendo NES what we're gonna do first is go to the retro bat shortcut open file location and we're firstly going to open up bat GUI now we're gonna go to system list and right at the top we're gonna find system if you just press on this by left clicking if you don't see this drop down list just here it's likely you haven't installed visual c plus plus and direct x in which case just follow my fully comprehensive guide on the full setup guide to retro bat but presuming you have got this and you can see this what we're going to do is just scroll down until we find nes now under file extensions, we're going to see .fds, .nes, .wad, .zip, .7, .zip, that's .7z or .7c. So all of these file extensions are supported for your games. I'm personally going to be using a zip file for this setup guide today. And under cores, this is your retro arch libretro cores. So we got the awesome FCUMM, Nestopia and Meson, and these are very good cores. They've been around for a very long time. So now we've established which file extensions for your games we need, we can also see what's going to emulate this in the background of RetroBat, which is obviously RetroArch. So let's close out of here and close out of this one. And whilst we're in the RetroBat directory, we're going to go down to ROMs. And in ROMs, we're going to just find NES. And here it is. So what I'm going to do is just drag and drop my Nintendo NES game inside of here, which I said is in a .zip file extension. And just close this down. And I may as well just delete this game folder now. And we're going to open up RetroBat. Okay, so we're now inside of RetroBat and we're going to find Nintendo now. If you're new to RetroBat, you'll likely see this logo here anyway. So let's go inside and what we can now see is the Double Dragon to the Revenge game. So I'm going to scrape some artwork for this by pressing start on my controller. Just going down to Scraper and I'm simply going to press on Scrape now. And this is going to get us a preview video also. So just give this a little bit of time. Okay, scrape and finish, game settings, update game list, and now press yes. And here we go. And preview video as well. So what we're going to do is just take a look at the view options. I'm pressing select on my controller, advanced system options, emulator. You're going to find a few of these retro arch and the retro cores, FCEUMM, Nestopia and Meson. And we've also got the option here to download Meson, but really there's no need. You know, you've got RetroWatch cores here, and for Nintendo NES, they work fine. Anyways, I'm going to put this to Auto, and by putting this to Auto, it's going to select the next option, which is Libretro FCEUMM, which works fine. So let's keep this to Auto. I'm not going to play around with any video settings for now, but we're going to boot this up and see if everything's working correctly. So I'm pressing A on my controller.
So I'm going to just back out there, and trust me, I was a pro when I was a kid at this game. Uh, <laughs> but time has changed. So what we're going to do next then is look at the video settings. So view options again by pressing select, advanced system options, shader set. We're going to make this old school. This is a really cool look. So if we just scroll down to uh, curvature, decorations. Now, as you can see just a minute ago through that gameplay, we got the Nintendo NES decorations on the side. Personally, mm, I don't quite like it, but I know people do like it. So what we're going to do is put none on this one. Game aspect ratio. Now, as we know, Nintendo NES came out in the 80s, mid 80s. And so they were designed really for four by three aspect ratio, which is the size of the image. If you put this to 16 by nine, it's going to look stretched. It's going to look pretty bad. So what I do recommend doing is just going down to the bottom and selecting full for this. Now, integer scaling pixel perfect. If we pop this one to on or even auto, because remember by selecting auto, it will choose the next option. Let's just put it to on anyways. And what we're going to do next is vertical sync. Yes, this will eliminate any screen tear should you come across any. We're going to go down to visual rendering, smooth games by linear filtering. We're going to turn this one to on or auto, whatever, just to enable this. And this is going to smooth the game so they don't look so pixelated. Now, trouble with some Nintendo NES games is that due to its hardware limitations if there's too much happening on the screen at once you'll notice that the sprites or rather the characters in the game might flicker you've got the option here to turn this on and if we go down one to palette we can actually change the colors so that's for you to experiment with what I'm gonna do is just leave this to default for now for the real experience so I'm gonna go to back back and let's open up double dragon 2 again So you see that looks pretty cool, especially with that curvature filter. But let's go back to view options, advanced system options, and change the shader set to enhanced. So that's going to take away that effect of the old CRT TV. And just remember, under shader set, you can experiment with any of these, including scan lines. In fact, let's put scan lines on. Now, just remember, if you do want to put your aspect ratio to something like 16.9 or a full screen, you need to disable decorations. Otherwise, if we choose a decoration and you've got it on full screen or even 16 by 9, a lot of your image of your gameplay is going to go. So just make sure if you're doing that, just to select none. So let's check out scan lines. <laughs> So if that's looking a little bit too stretched for you, just a simple case of going to view options again, advanced system options, game aspect ratio, and this time I'm gonna put it onto core provided. And if you select core provided, it's gonna automatically detect that it's a four by three game. And if we boot it back up again, So granted, that looks a lot better, but the trouble is it is a smaller screen, but that comes with the price of all these games like this. If you want a very nice picture and you don't want it too stretched, then it's either going to be core provided or just let 4x3 to get that real experience of Nintendo NES. So that's it for today's Retro Bat and Nintendo NES setup guide. Very brief and straight to the point. So if you liked today's video, be sure to hit notifications, subscribe in like so you don't miss upcoming Retro Bat content, and be sure to check out my long list of 
set up guys for RetroBat. I've got a lot right now. So if there's anything you're looking to set up within RetroBat, it's quite likely in my RetroBat playlist. But anyways, join me on social media. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.